Sonic characters are extremely powerful. And there are a lot of Sonic characters. But what if you had Sonic characters' powers in real life? In today's video, we will be ranking every Sonic character's powers based off of how cool they would be in real life. Let me know what your ranking is, but let's get into it. All right, first character we got on the list right here is Amy Rose. Amy Rose is one of the main characters of the Sonic cast, but out of most of the Sonic characters, she doesn't really have any crazy ability. She has the Pico Pico hammer. Like, I guess one of her main abilities is swinging around with a giant mallet. Can't think of many uses for a giant mallet. I mean, maybe if I was like building construction or something like that, but even in that case, that hammer might break the house. So for that very reason, Amy Rose's power in real life is unfortunately gonna have to go into the D tier. Next up, we have Big the Cat, everyone's favorite purple cat. I mean, what really is his power? Is it just fishing? You know, honestly, maybe his superpower is losing Froggy. I mean, technically, you could probably consider the fact that he has super strength since he canonically lifts up a car in Sonic Adventure. If it was just the fishing power, he'd probably be in the D tier, but since he has super strength, I'm gonna have to throw him into the B tier. Next up, we got Blaze the Cat. Blaze was first introduced in Sonic Rush, and she's definitely a fan favorite character, and her power is the ability to control fire. In my opinion, the ability to control fire isn't that cool, but maybe it could be useful for some things. I don't really know what I could do with the ability to control fire. Maybe I could be like the world's greatest firefighter or something like that, but then again, probably be like an anti-firefighter. She's got some powers though, so we'll probably throw her into the C tier. I'm not going to encapsulate all of her powers at once, all right? We're going to basically stick to like the main one. Next up, we have Chaos. What is Chaos's power, you might ask? Well, he actually exists to showcase the Dreamcast water tech, and he turns into a blob of water. He can also turn into a fish. I mean, what could this be useful for? Probably not many things. I can't think of many scenarios where I'd want to turn into water. What if I accidentally get washed down the drain? Listen, compared to all these other characters, it's not that cool. We're throwing him into the C tier. Next up, we got Charmy B. I'm going to be honest with you guys, Charmy B has got to be one of the most annoying characters in the Sonic franchise. You know what Charmy B can do, though? He can fly, and also he can sting people. Unfortunately, as annoying as Charmy B might be, he's gotta go into the S tier because I feel like the ability to fly would be really cool. Next up, we got Cream the Rabbit who first debuted in Sonic Advance 2. Now, Cream the Rabbit is one of those characters who probably doesn't possess the greatest amount of strength, but if there's one thing Cream the Rabbit can do, she has the ability to fly with her giant flappy ears. Honestly, if I have to use my ears to fly around, like if I need ginormous ears, like that would be a big problem, okay? That would just be weird. If I have to use her ears to fly, I'm gonna be honest, that's like an A tier. But if it's just the ability to fly, we're throwing her into the S tier. Let's move on to the next character, which is Dr. Eggman. Dr. Eggman is an evil genius with a 300 IQ. He has built some of the most impressive fleets known to man, and having this power could come with great responsibility. He uses his power for evil though. Being the smartest person in the world would definitely have a lot of benefits, but is he really that smart? Because he always gets beaten by a super powered talking rat. This guy is negative plot armor, okay? He's literally never won. So the big problem with being a genius like this also is that you have to do a lot of thinking and a lot of building and a lot of work. Like think about how long it takes this guy probably to build some of these massive structures and how much work he has to do. Would it be incredibly useful to have a 300 IQ? Well, <laughs> I already know what it's like to have a 300 IQ. Just kidding, all right? It's not really that novel or cool. For the nature of this discussion, it's like, oh, like, what's your superpower? Oh, I'm Superman. Oh, what's your superpower? I'm Albert Einstein. Being incredibly smart would be super useful, but in terms of just how cool and how novel it is, it's not that crazy. We're gonna go ahead and actually throw that into the B tier. I know, very hot take. We're getting, we're getting super hot takes right now. Next up, we have Espio. Espio is one of the world's greatest detectives. He's also a ninja, and he can also go invisible, which is probably his, like, main main superpower if you had to ask me. I looked up the advantages of invisibility on Google and it says get a lot of money very quickly, gather blackmail material on people in positions of power, make money smuggling narcotics, enact revenge on your enemies while hiding your power, and generally go places where you're unwanted. Okay, the power to go invisible sounds literally insane. <laughs> I would use my powers for good, okay? It seems to be a very versatile power, so we're going to go ahead and throw that into the A tier. Next on the list, we got Infinite. Here's the thing about Infinite. Without the Phantom 
Jim Ruby, this guy is literally powerless. He's just like an above average strong fighter. That doesn't cut it in a fantasy universe full of anthropomorphic animals that go Super Saiyan. You know, with the Phantom Ruby, okay, he's definitely a formidable threat. He has the ability to create illusions of himself and also bend reality. But do we count this as a power? I mean, this guy, anyone could possess the Phantom Ruby, am I right? All right, I don't want to get bullied. So I'm going to put Infinite's power in the B tier. Without the Phantom Ruby, he's D he's actually below Amy. He's in the, the blank tier. But we're going to consider the Phantom Ruby. That's kind of his signature thing. We'll throw it into the B tier. Having illusions of yourself could be cool. Imagine there's some like social gathering or family party or something like that you just don't feel like going to and you could just create a copy of yourself to actually attend for you. Oh, you don't feel like going to work that day? All right, just send the copy in. Let's say you don't want to go to school. Just send the copy in. So low key, I mean, if you consider some of the other things he can do, maybe he could go a little bit higher, but... Mm -mm. All right, he's going into the A tier. All right, the Phantom Ruby's going into the A tier. Next up is Jet the Hawk. What is Jet the Hawk's power? And by proxy, I'm just going to put all the other Babylon rogues in the same tier as him because he's basically the same as them. They don't really have any significant powers. His power is that he can ride extreme gear. He can basically ride skateboards pretty good. He's like an extreme version of Tony Hawk, I guess. I don't know. It would be really cool to ride extreme gear around the town. Like imagine being able to hop on that thing and just like fly around. Here's the problem though. All he can really do is ride the skateboard really cool. What if you're on the way to work and you fall off the extreme gear? I'm going to get hurt, okay? As far as all the other superpowers you could have, riding a skateboard or hoverboard really cool leaves a lot to be desired. So Jet the Hawk's power, I'm sorry guys, it's going to go into the C tier. Next up, we got Knuckles the Echidna. What more can be said about Knuckles the Echidna? He's one of the world's greatest treasure hunters. He also has the ability to glide and climb on walls. I think being able to glide would be even more more fun than flying. I don't know why. It's like being on a permanent hang glider. I think I would probably go on top of a mountain and just start hang gliding and maybe even take Knuckles gliding to work. Knuckles even possesses super strength. He probably has one of the most well-rounded packages out of all the other characters that we talked about already. Could you guys imagine what my max bench press would be if I was Knuckles the Echidna? I think due to the sheer well-roundedness of the character, he has to go into the S tier. There's no other option. Next up, we got Maria. What is Maria famous for? Maria! And with that being said, Maria is going into a brand new tier. We're going to call it the Swiss cheese tier. RIP Maria. Can we get an RIP in chat? Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we got Metal Sonic. Metal Sonic is a cold, ruthless robot who was made to match the speed of Sonic the Hedgehog. It's safe to say that the guy's got some pretty cool abilities when you consider the fact that he's a direct match to Sonic. He's super fast. You can also fly with the jets on his back. Could you imagine how fast you could travel around the world to anywhere you want to go if you had Metal Sonic speed and flight Ability. Safe to say it would be pretty cool. So in terms of powers, he's definitely in the S tier. However, the fact that he is a cold hearted robot and you would have to assume his robot form in order to possess his power, that would just be kind of a sad, lonely existence, right? You can't experience any emotions. All you know is destroy Sonic. That's basically your only objective. Basically go after your ops. Oh, what's that? You say that doesn't count? Oh yeah, sorry. I made the video. It's my video. I made the rules, all right? Because he's a cold hearted, emotionless robot, although he has cool abilities, we're going to throw him into the A tier. We're going to drop him out of the S tier. Next up, we got E123 Omega. You know, E123 Omega's got some cool abilities. He has like the gun blasters. He can actually fly as well. He also low-key possesses super strength. Similar to Metal Sonic, he's kind of just like this emotionless robot. It's kind of like the Metal Sonic situation. He's a cold emotionless robot. And then you think about like comparing the powers that he has to all the other Sonic characters. It's like, I think we can do better than that. And look how slow he's flying, by the way. This doesn't look that fun, okay? He has some ability, so I guess I'll throw him into the C tier. I mean, Amy Rose is literally just like a hammer swing, so I'm going to have to keep her in D. E123 Omega, by default, since he has some type of power, has, I guess he's a C tier. Next up, we have Orbot. They're literally one of Eggman's lackey henchman robots, so they have no powers whatsoever. They're not cool or interesting in terms of, like, being them, okay? I like the characters. They're funny. They're comedic relief. If I were to be these characters, you gave me the option to do it, I wouldn't do it. He's going straight into the D tier without any question. Next Next up, we got Ray, the flying squirrel. Ray is a cool little character. He's someone that you don't really see too often in the Sonic franchise. He has the ability to fly kind of like a squirrel. He's literally a flying squirrel. Now, his ability is cool because he can fly, right? But it's not quite the same as someone like Cream the Rabbit or Charmy the Bee that have more traditional flight. It's more of just like a glide, you know? I think if I wanted to, I could be kind of like a flying squirrel in real life if you gave me the right equipment. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and throw him into the B tier because, you know, it could be a little bit better. Next up, we 
have Mighty the Armadillo. He's another one of those Sonic characters that you don't really see that much in the franchise. Where are Mighty and Ray? You gotta ask yourself that question if you're a Sonic fan. They have not been seen since the classic era. What is Mighty's power, you might ask? He can roll into a ball and go really fast towards the floor. That power is not cool at all. I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this. Mighty the Armadillo fans, I am sorry to inform you that he's going into the Swiss cheat. No, he can't go into that tier. He's going into the D tier. Next up, we got Rouge the Bat. Rouge the Bat is another fan favorite Sonic character. And it's kind of weird because in Sonic Heroes and in a lot of like the shows and cutscenes and stuff like that, she has the ability to fly. But then you play SA2 and she can only glide. So it's kind of a weird situation. You know, you have to take that into account. It's like, are we counting the flight? Are we counting the gliding ability? That's really up for you guys to decide. I'll make a final decision in a second. But one of her biggest things is that she's a treasure hunter. In addition to the fact that she has some similar abilities to some of the other characters, she's got expert level hacking abilities and she can get jewels at will. She's basically rich, right? She can get any diamonds in the world. When you factor in the gliding ability, the flight ability, and the ability to chase the bag and get diamonds, I'm gonna have to throw her into the S tier. It's like a mixture of knuckles and tails. Next up, we got Shadow the Hedgehog. Shadow the Hedgehog is the ultimate life form and he possesses several cool abilities such as super speed, which by the way, I think only works due to his air shoes. So maybe that docks him a couple of points. He has the ability to go super, but I don't know if we're gonna count that. I guess we'll like keep it to his base form powers. But I think the real kicker and the real deal breaker is his signature ability to use chaos control, which allows him to bend time and space to warp around at light speed, or maybe even faster than light speed, if I'm being honest. Again, I think of the ability to use super speed to basically travel all around the world whenever I want would be really cool. Also, another thing that I think would be cool is that using super speed can basically ensure that you're never late to anything ever. Maybe I can use that super speed to be a world-class athlete. Imagine this. Imagine you're late for like a flight or something like that. You just use your super speed and you're right there. We've all been there before, okay? Shadow the Hedgehog, my man, you're going into the S tier. And next up, we got Silver the Hedgehog. Silver the Hedgehog is definitely not one of my favorite characters to play in Sonic 06, but he has some pretty cool abilities. And if I had any of these in real life, I think I would be cool with it. For starters, he has the ability to glide for a short, very short period of time. He's got some psychokinesis powers. Imagine you're laying down, you can't reach for your phone or you just like use your psychokinesis powers to reach for it. I mean, there's a lot of creative things that you can do with it. But unfortunately, the flying you're seeing right now is actually a different version of Silver. So with all that in mind, we're gonna go ahead and throw him into the A tier because I still think the powers that he has are definitely like the most super powery kind of powers that he has. Next up, we got Sonic the Hedgehog, the main character. The world's fastest supersonic hedgehog. The main character of the franchise. I think the greatest demonstration of what it would be like to be Sonic is actually watching the Sonic Unleashed opening. Imagine that you had the movement that this guy had and you can move this freely and this fast. Maybe if I'm bored one day, I'll use my supersonic speed to run as fast as possible on the ocean and run to like a tropical island to take a little day in the beach and then run back in just a blink of an eye. If canonically, that's how fast Sonic is, of course. I can't really think of any downsides to being Sonic. He's basically a direct equal to Shadow, who is also an S tier character. The deal breaker is the ability to use chaos control. Now it's canon that Sonic can use chaos control, although we don't really see it much after Sonic Adventure 2. So people kind of forget this and maybe people think that it's not really in his repertoire, but it should be. If we're not counting the ability to use chaos control, Sonic would be an A tier character. But since he can, and I'm going to assume that he still has the ability to do so, he goes into the S tier. And by the way, there's no order for these. The tier is the tier. Next up, we got Tails. I may be a bit biased, but the ability to fly to me is definitely one of the coolest abilities. I've always wanted the ability to fly in real life. I always think I used to daydream about it as a kid. Tails has that ability, so that's why he is automatically a high tier character. But the cool thing about Tails is that he has the same IQ as Dr. Eggman. So he gets Eggman's 300 IQ, but he also has the ability to fly. So that combined makes Tails automatically an S tier character. And that leaves us with Vector, the crocodile. Vector is also a detective. You could say he's strong. I mean, just because he's a power character in Sonic Heroes. But in terms of just like, what is his signature ability? His signature ability is something that I really can't think of off the top of my head. He's basically a poor detective because they can never seem to find work, these chaotic. So unfortunately, Vector with no special properties or powers is basically just like me in real life. We're throwing him into the D tier. Let me know your tier list down below.